Hey everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Official Visit Podcast. I'm Tyson Alger of the Oregonian, joined here by Andrew Greif, and today we have Oregon quarterback Dakota Prukop joining us. Uh, Dakota, thanks for uh, taking time out of your day. I know it's the last week of here at fall camp, but I appreciate you, uh, you coming on. I appreciate you having me. Um, Today's Andrew? decision day of quarterback, as, as they say, Helbridge said he's going to gather the troops, huddle up make a decision, let all you guys know. You've been through this twice. We talked about that last week. Mm-hmm. Um, does it feel like, either, is it new in any way now that you've been through it, or is it the same kind of anxiety coming through? Uh, I would say anxiety, you know. Um, I've been through it before. You know, I know the rules of the game, uh, you know, and I feel like I did everything I could. You know, I don't have any regrets. I don't have – I'm not sitting here looking back on fall camp going, ah, I wish I would have done that, I wish I would have done that, you know. So – it's, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm, you know, stressed or have any anxiety, and, you know, uh, we'll see what the coaches say. Sure. Is there a – in Montana State, do they announce that in front of the whole team, or they get the whole room together make it a small thing? Yeah, it's it's usually, like, you do in a position meeting. Right. Um, kind of let the guys know and everything. And, uh, and then, you know, the team just, you know, always kind of just finds out, and, you know, or just the next day who's with the, running with the ones sure. kind of deal. You feel a little taller walking around the day after <laughs> Uh, yeah, shoot, no, you know, last, last, uh, competition I was in, you know, it lasted for like a year and a half. It was a really, really long deal, and, um, you know, I, I felt really confident, um, you know, weeks prior, um, and, you know, but when you do get the decision, you know, it's really nice, and, you know, it's just, it's exciting, you know, call your family, let them know, um, as it was kind of in the back of your mind. So yesterday, I got on the phone and talked with Mitchell Herbert. Uh, former or well, current Montana Stud. State <laughs> Stud White Out, yes, uh, that's in his bio actually. Obviously, the brother of Justin Herbert. Um, yeah. He said that in May he comes back from Montana State for a little time here back home in Eugene, and invited you over to the house. Mm-hmm. Of course, Justin was still in school at that time. Mm-hmm. If you've been living under a rock, um, Justin has been kind of the sensation of fall camp. At the time, were you like this kid looks like he's pretty good like he's got some potential at the time as in in may in may yeah in may uh i mean i hadn't really seen him you know i I had watched a couple of his games um in high school with mitchell we'd be on the road and uh you know i think like one week we were playing eastern washington and you know that's kind of funny but we were playing eastern washington and we're in the hotel and uh mitchell started streaming his uh, game live on his computer, so we all would sit down and watch it. And so I watched like maybe two or three of his games. Yeah. But you know, I, you know, it's not like I had been looking into it or you know, I, you know, I had a lot right. on my plate. And um, but when he got here, you know, he, you know, he he really showed up pretty quick. Is that Eastern Washington field the ugliest thing you've ever played on? It's the ugliest field to watch film on. But when you're playing on it, you kind of forget. You know, it's no big deal. But watching film every day on I was, I was I was covering Montana at the time, and they played the debut on that field against Eastern Washington. Oh, yeah. And I just, my eyes hurt, my head hurt after after that yeah, game. Just, yeah, the inferno, as they call yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, Roos Field. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. With the the two buildings across the street that look like, as I was told, I don't know if they look like trash cans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, 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 for some reason, I feel like I heard they're doing a stadium expansion over there or something. They should. Um, Seems but, like everyone in that conference is because Montana yeah. State's expanding, just expanded too, didn't they? Yeah, they expanded a number of years back from before I got there. Probably, okay. So probably they expanded probably seven years ago. But uh, it's cool because all those stadiums, uh, and by all I'm talking about, Montana. Montana State and Eastern Washington, they pack out every game. Yeah. So it's cool. They have some cool environments. It's uh, from what I'm expecting, nothing like Autzen, though. Yeah, or Memorial Stadium in Nebraska. Yeah. 90,000. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so can you walk us back to, like, you make your decision and it's January and you mm-hmm. show up. Uh, like, what's, what's square one of learning the Oregon offense? Like, what do you do? Is it just book work for, like, three weeks? Because you obviously you're just doing conditioning at that point. Like, how do you get into this part where you're comfortable. I mean, square one was getting to know the guys, and that was it was a lot tougher than, you know, I even anticipated. Uh, it's, you know, because everywhere you go, it's new. There's um, so much different diversity in every team you go to, and, you know, it's you know it's about building relationships with each guy, and, uh, you know, reflecting back on Montana State, I had a couple close friends, you know, my first you know, one or two years, and it wasn't t- probably till about year three I started to really get to know everyone on a personal level, and it just takes time, you know. Yeah. To build trust between teammates is not something um, that just happens overnight. Um, but it was a, there was a slightly accelerated process here just because there had to be, um, but it's good now. Um, you know, I'm really enjoying 
uh, you know, the relationships I have with many of the players on this team, and there's still guys that I'm still getting to know. Yeah. Your roommate, Johnny Munt, was saying that um, you're, you could be a little cleaner <laughs> and that um, he doesn't understand. By the way, I, I could totally see Johnny as just being a complete – clean freak. Yes, so yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's a clean dude. He's a clean dude. I, I don't I don't know. I am pretty clean, but Johnny might be like at the far end of the clean spectrum. I mean, you're yeah. just you're above average well, I, his standards. So. Yeah, well, I had a lot of I lived I in, you know, Mont- at Montana State. Um, in Bozeman the cost of living is a lot cheaper, you know. I had a hu- <laughs> I had a huge room there and I had, I had quite a bit of stuff and so, you know, when I was moving into the house and stuff, you know, I had kind of stuff everywhere. So, he is right in that aspect. But I, you know, I keep my um, my room pretty clean and all that. But, you know, one thing, uh, you know, coming here, uh, we're big on discipline. Mm-hmm. And people don't realize how important that is. You know, I almost, you know, from, and I'll, I'll get into it, but, you know, you don't realize how important it is in all aspects of your life, all the way down to the nitty-gritty to, like, making your bed in the morning. And I had never really made my bed in the morning. And then I got here, and they talk about it. And during the winter, you know, I'd heard them, you know, mention it a little bit here and there. It's more so something that gets really preached during fall camp. So, and obviously I wasn't here for a fall camp prior to getting here. So, um, you know, uh, this fall camp, we start talking about, you know, Coach Helfrich really goes into the importance of making your bed in the morning. And I had a whole You're like, meeting on it. And I was, yeah, I was like, oh, you know, I mean, if we're going to take 30 minutes out of our, you know, team meeting and talk about this, you know, it must be important. There must be something to it. And, you know, he pulled up some quotes and, there was a quote I remember uh, about Marcus Mariota, and when he was first in training camp with the Titans, his roommate, you know, somehow there was a little, you know, small little snippet, little story broke of, you know, how they're at the hotel and Marcus Mariota would make his bed every morning. And I thought, I was like, oh, it's, you know, and there's the, the, you know, whoever his roommate was, you know, like, hey, some guys, that's for them. He's like, me, I'm in a hotel, and so... You know they're gonna make my bed, and not not you know that's not a bad thing. You're in a hotel, you know you can expect that. But Marcus would make his bed every morning, and Coach Helfrich kind of talked about that, and then he he gave the example of Nelson Mandela making his um, bed in his prison cell every morning. It's just little things like that, and it, and it really kind of stuck with me. And I you know I was, you know at that point I was like okay you know this is you know they're not joking like this is a serious thing, and uh, and it's the whole process of winning the day. And putting yourself in a routine, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to make my bed, I'm going to go to, you know, our Oregon campus, our football campus, and we have an O we touch every morning. And it's kind of this routine you get into of discipline to start your day off to put, you know, your best foot forward so you can win the day. And it's something I've been doing, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just weird. You know, I wake up in the morning, and if, you know, I leave my room, let's say, to brush my teeth first or something, I still kind of feel weird. Like, ah, I need to make my bed. That's how I start my day now. And uh, so, and I'm just, you know, kind of going off on a tangent because we're talking about, you know, being clean and stuff. But it's uh, it's funny, just, you know, the little things, the little discipline. So what you're saying is the Marcus Mariota Sports Performance Center downstairs that's about to be open will have a high-performance bed-making Station. Well, actually, well, it's, got so those, it's got those sleeping pods. We got the pods, sleep pods. So, yeah, so they removed yeah, okay. they removed the covers. So <laughs> no, yeah, but uh, that's that's it. that's funny. Where's the O that you touch every morning here? It's um the one. So when we walk into the tunnel, okay, yeah. Uh, there's a big silver O. Plate. Yeah, there's a big plate. That's the one we touch. And like even uh, <clears throat> during all the construction for the performance center, they'd have all sorts of deals out there. They'd have you know forklifts and. You know, bulldozers or whatever, and uh, they'd always make this little small path you could always walk along, and the construction workers would make sure that there was always a way we could touch the yeah, so that was kind of cool. Because it's just a topic, because that thing opened up today, like, when you first came here to, like, the you know, everyone touts Oregon's facilities and all that sort of stuff, What was it as cool as it's made out to be? Like, like you know, a, a lot of it's, like, a big recruiting pitch to, like, kids of, like, come check out our, our – we have the state-of-the-art facilities. Like, Yeah, no, it's it, big, especially coming from um, a lower division where there's not an abundance of money. Uh, yeah, that was big. You just, you're kind of in awe the whole time. Like, no way. Like, yeah. you, you guys, wow, you know. And, Does that stuff make you a better football player? Uh, it can if you take advantage of it, right. you know. Um, but it's like anything, you know, and it – you know, money's never won anyone to snap a football right. uh, legally. You know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, you know it. Yeah, Ole Miss it, might. Get, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't. I, I kind of live under a rock in those terms. You know, I don't, I'm not hearing about all those different things. But uh, but the facilities and stuff. I would say more so. You know, we have so many resources in terms of you know character and player development. 
Uh, we, you know, and everyone loves being here to the trainers, to, to our uh, equipment staff. Um, you know, we have a outstanding um, equipment staff led by, you know, Kenny and, you know, just everyone's a, it's a, everyone's a yes person here. They're here to help you. And if there's something you approach to one of the staff members about, you need help or you need this or that, it's either yes or it's, uh, let's figure out what we can do here. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was talking to Royce Freeman about, um, was kind of your style of a runner, and then we tangent went on tangent about your arrival and kind of how you try to uh, integrate yourself into the fabric yeah. of the team. And he was saying that it was they thought it was kind of funny um, that you know you were branded as the savior of the offense, and oh, they yeah, thought that, and that's yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. Yeah, I think the media is part. I don't, think, yeah. I, mean, I don't think I ever said savior, but I think you used it in the headline. Well, maybe I said <laughs> maybe I said Jesus. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, from when you even though you were courted by schools that uh, would suggest that you have some skills. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of that pressure from day one that this guy's coming in and, well, Oregon's going to score 50 points a game now, this guy's here. Were you like, uh, let me get to campus? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, I had a lot on my plate, and I was, you know, I wasn't focused on that. Back in, you know, January, I'm focused on, hey, like, i, I got to get to know my teammates. Did they kind of bust you on that though kind of uh, just like I don't know like welcome you to the team almost like hey here's the savior no no it wasn't like that at all because um you know the outside world's perception of uh you know like quarterbacks and you know what, what team has who and right. it's always it's so far off it really is this team had a lot of talented quarterbacks now there were some breakdowns on the end of last season and stuff but Travis Johnson's very talented and everyone on the team knew that you know, they, and you know, I didn't. I didn't get here expecting. Oh, they're not gonna have anyone at all. You know, that's not how it was. And people are like, oh, there's this trouble in developing Oregon's quarterbacks and all this. And that's not true at all. Is it what the deal is? You had a um, a quarterback that was uh, that won the Heisman, and he left a year early. So for the 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 first two or whatever three years he's here, you're not getting any quarterbacks to really get it come in right. that expect you know they're like hey why would I come in and sit behind a guy that's going to be here till senior year you know that can be the thought process for a lot of those guys um, they had a lot of you know they have they've had good quarterbacks and they obviously develop quarterbacks they developed Marcus Mariota um, so that, that's not that was, there's never this team never had the thought process of man like we just really have a drop off you know we we can't you know we need we can't develop quarterbacks it was hey you know we're short we're short a quarterback um, Marcus left. Uh, you know, they brought Vernon in, and, you know, any team, any team, if Vernon would have called any team in the country, they would have been like, yes, come here. Vernon's an outstanding player, and it's, it's tough, you know, at the college level because with a, with a new guy, you never know how they're going to do when the pressure's on, when the bolts are flying. Things are different. Right. You, 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 there's not the red jersey that, oh, I'm not going to get here, hit here. And, you know, with experience, you learn different things like how to get a ball off while getting hit. You learn things like that. You, can, you know, it just comes with experience. And Oregon is such a, you know, successful program that, you know, they felt, hey, we don't have time to, you know, for any sort of drop off, any sort of lull. And so instead of, you know, throwing some, <clears throat> you know, young guy, you know, in the fire, you know, why not take, uh, and it just happened that it had to take two in a row and uh, took two transfers in a row. And <clears throat> now, and, you know, you guys, you know, we all talk about that now, but, you know, three years from now, they're like, man, how smart was it that they did that? Because they could develop all these quarterbacks. You know, right now there's three other quarterbacks in that room that are really talented. And, uh, you know, if you had to throw some of them in the fire, like, you know, sometimes it works out, but what if he goes down? And then you have another one you have to throw in the fire. And sure. It gives these guys time to sure. develop. Uh, you have guys like Coach Helfer, Coach Lubick, and Coach Yost that know how to develop a quarterback, but that's something that takes time. Uh, it's an anomaly, you know, really seeing true freshmen coming in and playing, and uh, things happen. Like, you, you might see in a game, oh, this quarterback had a great game, look at his stats, but you turn on the film and it's like, oh, well, you know, a lot of these plays, you can tell he's not having to read anything. He's not really having to operate the offense. They're, they're really kind of, it's like having training wheels on. Um, but, you know, one thing, about Justin Herbert, he just came in and they didn't, you know, they, they kind of, because they have the security of, hey, we have some older guys, they don't have to worry about that, preparing him in terms of, oh, we got to go play a game this week, you know. And so guys like Travis and um, Terry, or, yeah, more specifically Terry and Justin, you know, have had the opportunity to uh, learn the offense through growing pains and learning, hey, we got to uh, work through the progression and you know you're not just coming out here to take shots and try, you know we're going to learn teach you how to run the offense and that takes that's something that takes years and years and uh, having experience at Montana State running a similar type of offense I understood 
um, kind of the philosophy of the offense. And so that was that helped accelerate my learning process in terms of, you know, once I got the playbook down and the signals and everything, I'd already kind of understood, you know, how the offense works. Yeah. You know. How did you tell your Montana State teammates you were leaving? You know, it was kind of a long process because I wasn't, I wasn't sure, like, hey, is this really going to happen, you know? Was it some, um, all, what, all the guys, what, what, you know. Was that something you were thinking of going into that season or, like, no, midway through that season, like, no, this might be an opportunity so, for me? Yeah, it was more because, you know, uh, Vernon, you know, he came right in at the fall and, and stuff. I had planned to graduate, you know, far in advance. Right. You know, I'd, I went into, and my original thing is, I left high school with like 24 credits right. going into college, and the original thing was, hey, you know, if if I can do all this and I can really accelerate my graduation, I'll have my last, you know, year at Montana State to really just focus on football or you know whatever college I was going to. Sure. You know, I was like, hey, you know, that'd be a pretty cool deal. And I got the idea from uh, <coughs> uh, Garrett Gilbert. Um, he went to Texas, and I saw that he had like transferred to SMU or something, and all of that, and I, I can't remember, but I remember thinking, oh man, I can bring in credits and graduate early, and then I can just kind of really focus on football, because I've always had the aspirations to play in the NFL. So that kind of happened, and then at Montana State, it was weird, because I transferred all, all these credits, credits, I was on track, you know, I never even had to take summer school, and uh, it just worked out, I'm like, man, okay, and we're going in, and originally I was thinking I was going to graduate in the spring, and I was like, oh, well, I could take one more class and graduate in the fall, so why not, yeah. you know? And it was funny, you know, during the season and stuff, you know, because Vernon had done that, and everyone knew I was graduating. It wasn't, like, some secret. People yeah. would, like, make jokes, like, oh, are you going to leave? You know, are you going to leave? And kind of, you know, um, you know just, just jokes. And uh, But, you know, it, it ended fast up. Forward, yeah, fast forward, and, you know, <laughs> I don't know that, you know, if my coaching staff at Montana State, um, you know, at the time, you know, my, co you know, because at the end of my fall, my whole coaching staff got removed. Right. And that's big. And it's like, okay, we're going to start over, you know, here. Right. Or I can go start over, you know, a program that, you know, like Oregon. Right. Uh, do you have any uh, pregame ticks, uh, things like talking to some quarterbacks for a story, and they're saying, like, uh, you know, guys are, like, they have to get something out of their system, whether it's, you know, they like throw up a lot or, like, they're just extremely mm -hmm. nervous, like, manic energy. Talking to Joey Harrington, he said that he would listen to, like, like jazz, like jazz piano. Yeah. Do you, do you have, like, a thing <clears throat> you have to get done um, before you take the field that, that makes you settled? I, you know, one thing that really settles me is if I get a really good uh, night's sleep the two prior nights. Uh, if I can at least get, like, nine hours, then I just, you know, because sleep is really important to an athlete. And, you know, I'm really... Uh, conscious and t the health of you know your body and so just eating right sleeping right and, I'm, and I know just kind of you know in your subconscious in the back of your mind okay you know, I did all the nutritional things and the yeah. little things to make sure my body can perform today you know staying hydrated little things like that but you know, in terms of uh <clears throat> little things on game day um you know honestly it used to be okay so when I was in high school I used to listen to it like Pre-game, I'd listen to, like, a lot of Linkin Park and kind of, like, heavier stuff. Maybe some, like, metal songs I liked. I loved getting amped up. And I also played, like, linebacker and safety, you know, early on in my high school career. More appropriate. Yeah. More appropriate. <laughs> um, I can't really remember. I want to say, uh, so towards the, you know, my senior year and stuff in high school, I was still a riled-up guy. I still played some defense. And I started listening to some calmer music. I'm a big, uh, like, uh, violinist and cello guy. I love those kind of instruments. So I had a couple bands like Sybarite Five I'd listen to and uh, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Omar Lopez, I think. Or I can't remember. He has a really good like violin album. It's kind of funny. But I used to listen to some calming music. When I first got to Montana State um, and I was playing, I was, I was kind of nervous and stuff. I'd listen to a little like some R and B or some kind of some you know relaxing stuff or some of my classical music, sure. uh, but now you know I, it's it's weird. I almost am like I, sometimes I feel a little too calm before games, and almost too relaxed, and because uh, it was a whole thing of hey I want to be really relaxed, really even keel. And I remember my senior year at Montana or not my senior year, my junior year at Montana State, I would uh, there was like a game and I came out and I remember just being overly relaxed for it. It took me like a quarter to really get going. I had to get hit a couple times. And so it just kind of depends on the mood, you know. If I'm feeling a little too calm, I'll amp it up a little bit. Feeling a little too hyped, I'll, you know, just wind it down. It's kind of, you know, you don't want to be a, you know, uh, a thermometer. You know, you don't want to adjust to your surroundings. You know, you kind of want to be a thermostat and, you know, be able to dictate, you know, uh, kind of the level you're at. Right. 
What's the best food in Austin? Best food in Austin? Oh, my mom's kitchen. Uh, if you've ever been to my house, which you, your, you your guys high have. School, your high school coach was trying to send us, because when we, when we were down for the Alamo yeah. Bowl, we went up and met with some of your old coaches, uh-huh. and, and he gave us a couple places, but they were all closed on the day. We went. Yeah. I guess it was New Year's Day. Yeah. Most, yeah. There's, there's, no, there's a lot of great food in Austin. I, you know, the list goes on, but... When I go home, I don't. Even, I, I eat. I eat at my house. Uh, my mom's a phenomenal cook. But uh, if you if you had to make me pick a place close by my home, you know, I really like Torchy's Tacos. I ate a lot of Torchy's Tacos. I think that was recommended. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure it was. When we when we went up to your off your high school offensive coordinator's house, and I don't remember what his name was, but Cooper. That guy Greg could, Cooper. that that guy could not fit the bill any better. Of we we show up, he's out like <coughs> underneath his truck working on yep. it come in and he runs what he's, he runs a gym uh, he was offering us food like uh-huh. that, was, that was a fun none oh, no, of, none of us are Texas students. he's the man yeah. he's the man he a uh, big part of you know my life you know building me as a player uh, it was he, the amount of importance he put on uh, you know character development and you know in in the coach's job description yeah I might say that but coaches are getting paid on wins and losses but he spent so much time on making sure he had good dudes and you know we left you know because of him you know I can deal with like high pressure quarterback battles and stuff like that and uh, you know he helped me in so many different ways and I I talk to him all the time you know and uh, and I still I'm in real close contact with him Um, you know he's real real good real good uh, friends with my parents and uh, they hang out and you know but no that's just kind of a I don't know the Texas culture or whatnot you know just Still, real, uh, you know, I still think about my high school coaches all the time. Um, they'll send me a text here, or there, and I'll respond with a call, you know, or vice versa. Yeah. So I was really fortunate to have guys like that in my life. Were you Longhorns fan growing up? Uh, it was weird because all my buddies were Longhorns fans, and a lot of them had tickets. As in a lot of, I think two of them had tickets to the games, and I would go with them every once in a while, and I loved going to the games, loved watching Vince Young. I even more so loved watching Colt McCoy, but I was actually a USC fan. Okay. My father had coached at USC, my grandfather played at USC, so I was a big Trojan fan, I was a huge Reggie Bush fan, still a huge Reggie Bush fan. So like USC kind of did them dirty, but... Uh, you don't have SC tattooed on you? No, like no, nothing like that. that. That was the stupidest story of all last season is uh, Vernon has SC tattooed on his arm oh, and Oregon funny. fans started freaking out about no, that. I didn't know that. <laughs> Can we trust him to play quarterback against oh, SC? Oh, goodness, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, so I, kinda, I was a USC fan for a while. Um, but, you know, once I started playing my own football and stuff, you know, I wasn't like a die... It's weird, I've never been like a diehard fan of any one team or anything. And I've always, you know, I've never been a diehard fan of any players, really, especially people always ask me my favorite quarterback. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Look, there's things I'd love to learn from all these different quarterbacks. If, you know, I had to build a perfect quarterback, I could. I could take, you know, Tom Brady's pocket presence with Peyton Manning's, uh, you know, ability to, con- you know, you know, just always uh, stay protected at the offensive line and stuff like that with, you know, Aaron Rodgers' arm and, Andrew Luck's uh, paycheck. <laughs> Andrew Luck's size and, you know, build. and But, no, I you know, I didn't, like I said, you know, I just always – and in my mind I was always like, you know, I didn't have a favorite, particularly like a huge favorite college football team because I was like, man, I'm going to play college football one day. Sure. That will be my favorite team. And in the NFL, like still to this day, I don't have a favorite team. Um, I have teams I'd like to play for, but, you know, I don't have a favorite team. I don't have favorite players because in my mind, you know, I'm trying to – you know, I've always kind of like, you know, put my mindset of like, hey, I'm going to be playing one day at that level. Hey, I'm going to be playing against those guys one right. day. So how can I go into the league, you know, wanting to ask them for autographs, you know? So I've, you know, I've never asked anyone for an autograph or anything like that. And that's not like a, you know, uh, a me thing or like a, you know, oh, I'm this great player because, you know, I'm not. It's not like that. I just, you know, it's weird. I've never had, you know, and my dad too, he was, maybe I got it from my dad. I, he was never a diehard anything fan. You know, he loved USC. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, he, you know, I enjoyed watching good football games and yeah. um, watching specific um, players, you know, do you know big things in big games and stuff like that. But I don't have memories of you know. I've never really hung anything in my room for yeah. any one team. That might be because you're you are a coach's son. I, obviously, you got a coaching fairly soon after you're a kid. But like, you bounce around a lot, and so uh-huh. you probably don't want to have too many ties. Uh huh. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it until now. My last question is. Uh, What's your reaction to Bruce Barnum describing you as a rabid Wolverine? 
uh, you know, Which, guy, I'd say that that's a compliment. I'd say that's, football. I'd say, you, t- I, you know, I take this compliment. <laughs> uh, if anything, though, know, that's a guy you need to, you know, I need to compliment is, you know, him, you know, what he did for their program. Right. Say, you know, not a lot of people can say, hey, I saved a football program. And of course, if you sit in this room, he'd be like, no, it wasn't me, it was the players. But I mean, that was the same players that, you know, we played against, you know, the two prior years or, uh, you know, I remember being a freshman on the sideline watching us play Portland State. I you know, watched, you know, the quarterback before me, Denarius McGee. I think they beat him by, like, 60, I feel like. And mm-hmm. they get all oh, this team is, oh, that's, you know, I'm so happy I'm not there. And to see what he did for that team, to see how hard that defense played, wow. You know, he, he whatever, you know, either is in the water down over there or, uh, and when, you know, however he inspired those kids, you know, he did an outstanding job. And, uh, you know, and they, you know they love him, and it paid off. And uh, it was it was cool to play a team a team like that. You know, a team that was had their back against the wall, and yeah. uh, you know they brought it. They brought it. I always remember that game just because of how hard their defense played. Well, this is a good podcast. I'm glad we got out of here live without the claws coming up between a Montana grad and, uh, and this, they're only three feet away from each other. You guys can coexist. Yeah, yeah we won the brawl last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll end this podcast.